Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial we'll be talking about how to really recover some serious shadow detail inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now, this is not for the faint of heart or the faint of camera, I guess, because you sort of need to be working with um, higher bit depth footage to pull this off and make it look okay, and you're going to have to do some noise reduction, but this will really sort of help, you know, save some shots. So. Without further ado, let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and get started. Now, here is a shot from a trailer that I'm working on, and I shot this footage so I can be as critical as I want. You can see that this shot is not not the best detail-wise. You can't really see what's going on. There's nothing really that's the focus of the shot, and we are going to fix this. So this was shot raw on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K, so we've got some room to work with, and what we want to do is bring out the detail in our subject here. So I'm going to bring over our scopes here so you can see what you're doing. And you can see there's this little line of stuff right here, which is most of the detail for our important part. And in order to expand this out, we're going to do some pretty serious curves work. So this is why you shoot in higher bit, bit depths, because the number of steps that you get in between these little layers is a lot more with higher bitrate footage. So the number of steps for this whole range for 8-bit footage is... 2 to the power of 8, 256. But since this is 12-bit, we get 2 to the power of 12, which is this many steps. So it'll be, there's a lot more detail in here that you can pull out. So sorry if you're shooting on a T3i, but you're not going to get this detail back. So anyway, that's enough rambling on. Scoot this up here. What we're going to do is we're going to just add contrast to the selected area, which is what the curves is great for. It's doing these really intense minor adjustments. So we will start bringing our black levels down until we get sort of blacks to blacks. And that's helping bring out a little bit of detail, just adding contrast to the shot globally. But now we're going to just in this bottom part, start bringing stuff up. And you can see our little line here is already a little thicker. So that means that we've got more contrast in just that area. See now, I mean, it's pretty noisy, but you can see now we're getting detail out of here, and that's great. And you can, and now if you look really closely at these curves, you can see that it sort of does a little S down here, which is not quite what we want in this case. So in order to fix that, we can go over here and go to editable splines, and now we can make this really seriously contrasty. Pull this in, bring this back down. And keep an eye at this little line up here because you can see, look at how much more de how much more contrast we have in this area now. Like I said, this is super noisy, but the detail's there. And this shot is super duper fast. So, you know, we're going to be able to get away with it here by just reducing the noise and sharpening things back up. This would be nicer on, you know, an even even nicer camera because we've got you know a little bit of that fixed pattern noise that comes out whenever you really push the Ursa Mini 4.6K. But for now, look at how much more detail we have in this shot. You can see really noisy, but you know we can fix that by just going to temporal noise reduction, which is a DaVinci Resolve Studio only feature, and we will end up having this at better. But for here, um, we won't. Uh, motion estimation range will be medium, which is good. We're going to crank our Luma all the way up to 100 and just bring our Chroma up to about 50. You can see already, I should put this in another node so you can do, so you can see what you're talking about. It's already helping out a little bit. And then we'll bring our motion um, threshold up, which will just let more of the image be taken in. And now you can see if this is just going to sort of go whizzing by. Uh, I might have to make this one frame. I think you're getting a little bit of artifacting in there. Yeah. So right here, you can see there's this little artifact going on. So we'll need to change this to one frame because this is moving too fast. See, that cleans it right up. But that makes a noise reduction not quite as good. But, you know, this shot's pretty motion blurry and, and stuff. So, I mean, I think we're going to be able to get away with it from there. That's the, the tip. Um... You know, if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what feelings down in the comments below. But if you want to stick around, I will show you the actual grade that I did for this shot in this trailer. You can hit Control-B to go to the other version. And now you can see this is what it actually ended up looking like. I probably need to reduce this noise 
even a little bit more. I might drop the spatula reduction in there. Yeah, nice. So if we go through this node by node, you can see in this first node, we did just like we did in the tutorial. You see this is the gnarly curve that I came up with for there. And just in case you're curious, here's the raw settings. So pretty, pretty simple stuff. And then we've got this crazy parallel setup, which I've been doing a lot recently. And you can do all these in serial nodes. It's totally fine. I just like to do it this way to keep myself organized. And so you can see here, we just selected the darks and then we um, added some more contrast there. In this one, we just selected the highlights and we brought them down. So we did a little bit of an HDR effect. Oop, let's bring these nodes back. So that's where we're at now, looking pretty good. Then here is where I isolated just the gun in this node and contrasted it up more and added more noise reduction because I decided that the gun was the focus of the shot because like I said, there wasn't really any focus going on here. And then in this node, I just sort of blurred everything else a little bit to hide the fact that the gun wasn't quite in focus because we we're running gun on the shot, shooting pretty blind. Now, in this node, vignette, and then here, it's brightening up in the middle. If hit shift H, you can see. So this is where we're at now. Uh, looking pretty rough, but in this next node, we're going to fix it up. So darken it down a little bit and add more noise reduction. And hopefully that will work pretty well and fit in with the rest of the stuff. And you know what? I might even, since I'm here, darken our darks down just a little bit more. Nice. I think I like that. A little better so you can see that's the shot before there's a shot after we can see that there's a subject in the shot even if it's a little bit blurry and you know get a little bit of the detail back in this background because i know the director was worried about that and there's some focus in the shot now but you can see we got pretty close with just our our one main thing getting the detail back here so um yeah glad you stuck around this long be sure to check out meesnewmedia.com slash products where we've got all sorts of good stuff. Check out the Swiss Lutz pack in particular. And I've rammed along enough. Once again, I'm Theo with Meese New Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.